All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. I hope you had a great weekend. My weekend was interesting. YouTube was going right and left to um, take down the videos on our site. So check this out. This is, these are the three videos within 24 hours that they took down. So this was how does Ivermectin work? They brought it down, sent me a message that, hey, you have violated their terms and conditions, but they're not going to give me a strike yet because I may not know that it is bad to talk about Ivermectin. Then they took down this one, Ivermectin dose, um, and sent me the same message. Then they took down um, this your 32 questions yesterday. I appealed, and of course, they rejected the appeal. With that, they simply said, we're not going to, we are removing a strike for now, but don't do this again. So this is one. Second thing that I did over the weekend, I went to San Francisco. And so on the way back, this was the uh, 280 uh, freeway. And at this place, I took a picture. My wife was driving, so I took a picture and then I came back and I, I uh, painted it. The title is 280 to home. So with that, now let's start. I think you will really be excited. You'll be, it is so much interesting to see today's uh, topic. Let me give a prelude to the topic. We have been talking about the clotting possibly because of the vaccines. It would I would never forget about this because when I had started talking about it, I got so much hate. I got so many threats. I got so many people becoming upset, even to the point of that I somehow hate UK because the um, AstraZeneca and, and the Oxford is from UK and I am colluding with German scientists. There was just crazy stuff. But uh, I had this theory at that time as well, even for the doctor here in Florida who died after the Moderna's vaccine and clotting, my theory was that this is antibody driven and not spike protein driven. And here is a, an article that actually shows not only exactly how clotting occurs, but it shows the exact amino acids involved in clotting. I have never seen before for this clotting mechanism such a focused view of the mechanism. It almost looks like you take a little helicopter, you sit in it, and you land on a platelet, and you see the exact mechanism that is happening there. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about this one. There is another important thing to note here, and that is that this is, this is manageable. If we understand how does it occur, then it can be managed. And the management happening, which remember, even I have been talking about about it, that heparin is not is contraindicated. They actually proved that it is possible that heparin will actually be useful. So I will discuss how does that mechanism work. So this is the talk. Let's start our discussion. The links are here. So the links are, this is drbean.com. One more thing, as YouTube started bringing us down right and left, uh, people asked me to move to Odessi. Odessi's team, they are, they're so wonderful. They reached out and they said, hey, we can actually copy every piece of content from YouTube over to Odessi. And you don't have to do anything. We will do all the work. They had simply asked me to make sure that this banner and the picture and those things are correct. So I'm working on that. But this is Odessi. So here on odessi.com, there is Dr. Mubin Sayyid. And if you go there, they have, even I was astonished. A few minutes ago, I looked at it, and they have copied over majority of the, the videos from YouTube. And they're in contact with me over Twitter, continuously discussing. And they are saying that they would even support me to go live using Odessi. So we'll see how does that work. So that is a good news. That is Odessi. This is the article. I have the PDF for the article here as well. Then there are some supporting links here. Again, if you do not like Wikipedia, just take these topics and, and, and study them from wherever you feel more confident and, and uh, trusting. So with this, there is this alpha granule of the platelet. What is heparin? What is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia? Because this uh, vaccine-induced 
thrombo thrombotic thrombocytopenia is very similar to heparin induced thrombocytopenia so we will look at their comparison to each other as well and then finally this is a list of amino acids and their single letter codes amino acids as you know are the bricks with which our proteins are made these are the smallest bricks with which we are made and there are a few of them i think 20 or so and there are many amino acids but 20 are the one that are par participant in us and there are these letter numbers not numbers letters that represent them and we need to see this table because we look at the exact amino acids that are participating in clotting so i'm going to close this as well all of these references are present in the discussion uh, in the links description so let's start study summary so if you just wanted to know what are they saying the summary is the following they are saying for the first time so the study's own status it is a peer reviewed study it has been accepted and nature is a good uh, publication engine so it is accepted in a good one uh, so they talk about this rare side effect of vaccine and remember the german scientists had called it that they proposed this mechanism to say this term to say we should call it vaccine induced thrombocytopenic throm uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenia and it became a huge issue that this is all political and geopolitical and all that so now i think it is correct and we look at the mechanism to see how that does this happen it resembles heparin induced thrombocytopenia which is known for a long time in majority of the patients who are on patients who are on heparin they sometimes get the hit or heparin induced thrombocytopenia but thrombo heparin induced thrombocytopenia primarily occur in patients on heparin this particular vaccine induced thrombocytopenia or thrombotic thrombocytopenia occurs without heparin so if you are on heparin it is nothing to do with heparin it is independent of it and number two it is actually possible that if somebody is on heparin that would help alleviate the situation or reduce the intensity of the situation now what are the results what did they find again we are still on the summary they found that platelet factor 4 that i've been discussing for a long time platelet factor 4 does have a have a epitope on it to which antibodies generated against the spike protein on the by the vaccine those antibodies cross react with the epitope on platelet factor 4 which in turn causes the activation of platelets which in turn causes the aggregation of platelet that is called thrombosis when the aggregation of platelet occurs when the platelets start hugging each other and they start clotting then the amount of platelets is reduced in the body and that is thrombocytopenia so this is thrombotic thrombocytopenia this is the summary of it it is very similar to heparin like uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia and not only similar it actually attacks the antibody attacks half of the same site as is attacked by the hit or heparin induced thrombocytopenia so that is a summary what is the solution to this of course anti-clotting heparin can actually be useful actually better useful than other uh, uh, blood thinners and i'll explain why this is the summary of it let's look at the mechanisms now fascinating mechanisms uh, i really really uh, appreciate these uh, uh, researchers so let's start from here first of all let's understand what is heparin induced thrombocytopenia here is a platelet a platelet does not have a nucleus it is actually formed it is pinched off it is broken off from a bigger cell that is called megakaryocyte megakaryocytes are found in bone marrow and smaller pieces of them are pinched off and separated and these smaller pieces are called platelets platelets have a bunch of things in them for example they have mitochondria they have alpha granules 
and they have dense granules as well. Alpha granules and dense granules are nothing but small purses, small pockets in which enzymes are sitting. If I take an alpha granule out of a platelet and look at it a little more closely, in the alpha granule, in that little pocket, there is platelet factor 4, this red one, that is the, uh, the protein that we're going to talk about today. In addition to that, there is insulin-like growth factor. There is platelet-derived growth factor. There are other clotting factors. There is tumor growth factor, beta, and so on. Remember, platelets function is towards clotting. So of course, clotting factors there is not something unusual. So this is within the platelet. Now, what happens is, imagine this is platelet factor four. If I go back here, platelet factor four was present in the alpha granules. Alpha granules are present inside the platelet. So platelets have inside of them a small pocket thousands of such pockets, that pocket has this platelet factor 4. Platelet factor 4 here, this red block, is also called chemokine ligand 4, CXCL4. Why is it called a chemokine? When a platelet releases this, when a platelet becomes active, it opens up its pockets and gives the money out to everyone to say, come work with me and do clotting. So when it gives the money out, one part of that money, one chemical that is released is this platelet factor four. It is a chemokine factor. That means it attracts more platelets there. It attracts more immune system cells there. It helps generate inflammation and clotting at that place where it is present. Normally, platelet factor 4 is present in the vicinity of platelets because it is released by the platelets. This is why when the platelet factor 4 is attacked by the antibodies, these would settle on platelets because the nearby cells or not cells, these tiny things, uh, enucleated cells, let's say, the near, nearby cells are platelets. So whatever is nearby is going to get attacked as well. So this is the platelet factor 4. Now, if you add heparin in the system, heparin binds with the platelet factor 4, and it does its function. It is anti-clotting. But in some people, in some people, now check out here. This is heparin, the one that I'm doing blue now, making blue. When heparin binds with the platelet factor 4, then a new epitope is formed. This is just like this, that if you look at my head right now, imagine this is a pattern of my head. And if I take this little thing and put it on my head, now the pattern of my head is different. And imagine if somebody remembers this pattern as an enemy's pattern, then that somebody is going to attack me. Although I am not the enemy, this was just an accidental thing that this pattern was formed. So here, what happens is heparin actually binds to the platelet factor 4 in almost all of us when we have heparin. However, in some people, when heparin and platelet factor 4 combine, that give, gives rise to a neoepitope. Epitope is an area where an antibody can bind. Normally, anywhere from 7 amino acids to 11 amino acids, or if an amino acid is a brick, from 7 bricks to 11 bricks. In some people, when heparin binds, this neoepitope becomes a target for the antibodies. Now, the question is why? And do we know who? So the answer to do we know who? We do not. Why? Just like allergies, that some people's B cells generate antibodies against those heptans or those epitopes to which majority of the population does not create antibodies. It is a genetic structure plus result of the somatic hypermutation. What is that when our B cells are formed in us, they are asked to make their own binding sites. And those binding sites are made by random changes in them. And in some people, unfortunately, a random binding site becomes 
created that can look at this part of heparin and platelet factor 4 together and say, well, I'm going to attack this thing. I don't like it. So because of that, it is called a new epitope, new epitope. So here, this is, we're still talking about heparin. So because of heparin's attachment to platelet factor 4, some antibodies which were not normally going to attack platelet factor 4 now started to bind with this, with this complex. Then what happens? So please remember these antibodies are usually IgG type. That means they can live for a longer period of time. Now, then what happens? Once these antibodies are produced, usually between five days and onwards, up to 28 days, once they are produced, they usually start producing on the fifth day. They continue to be formed for three months. And good news, after three months, they go away compared to antibodies against other pathogens or pathogens or compared to antibodies generated by the B memory cells, fortunately, these memory cells are not formed. So antibodies are produced at the active time of heparin introduction. And then within two, three months, these antibodies are cleared out. That is a good news. Otherwise, if these antibodies were not cleared out or if the platelet, sorry, those B cells that are producing these antibodies, these were not cleared out, then we'll continue to make antibodies forever. Then this person would never come out of the bleeding disorder. So that fortunately does not happen. And that is the same situation with the vaccines as well. So that is an entirely a lucky thing. So mechanism of clotting. So now let's say those uh, platelet factor 4 and heparin combined creates an epitope against which antibodies are produced. How does that cause clotting? So see here, let's say this is a platelet. On the surface of the platelet, we have receptors to bind with the antibodies. So these receptors are called, if you see here, FC gamma 2A, FC fraction constant or fraction crystalline, gamma, which is for IgG, IgG uh, antibodies called gamma antibodies, and 2A is just a receptor classification, and it's a receptor. What does this mean simply? It means it's a receptor on the platelet that can bind with the antibody that is against the platelet factor 4 or IgG. So here, if you see, this is an antibody that has bound to platelet factor 4 and heparin. And because this antibody was in the vicinity of platelet, because platelet factor 4 is in the vicinity of platelet, this antibody bound to the platelet. Once it binds to the platelet, so there were other happy platelets sitting there as well, just kind of looking at what is going on here. So once that binding occurs, there is intense activation of a platelet. So once the binding, once the antibody binds on the surface of a platelet, platelet becomes very angry. It takes that as a signal to become activated, just like it is a signal for mast cells to become activated. It is a signal for macrophages to become activated. It is a normal behavior of our immune system. So as soon as the platelets are bound by these antibodies, they start degranulating platelets. Their degranulation will mean they would release a lot of prostaglandin. They would release a lot of clotting factors. We just looked at some of those things in the beginning of this uh, talk. In addition to that, they would release cytokines that would activate monocytes. Remember these uh, platelet factor 4, for example, is a chemokine. It's going to attract the monocytes and other immune cells. Then the other cytokines in the vicinity is, are going to activate those immune cells. So the monocytes would come in and they would become active as well. So now in that blood vessel where there is platelet clotting going on, there is inflammation going on as well. This is not because of the spike protein attaching to ACE2. It is the spike protein causing the production of antibodies, antibodies combining with the platelet factor 4, platelet factor 4 and antibody complex sitting on the surface of the platelet, activating the platelet, 
which in turn then causes clotting. So now, still continuing, why the clotting? Fine, we now know that platelets are active. When platelets are active, they start holding each other. They start binding with each other because they know their function is to clot. So an active platelet not only calls armies to come in that area to work, they would also start clotting with each other. So that is one reason clotting would start. A second reason is this platelet factor four, this protein that was released by platelets, when it is bound with the antibodies, which antibodies? The antibodies that are generated because of the vaccine or because of heparin. Once those antibodies are bound to platelet factor four, platelet factor four has a conformational change in it. What does that mean? Once you unlock the door, you can open the door. So moving the door in or out to open it is a conformational change. Or you may have seen the older movies, not older movies, the um, what are those movies where people go and do treasure hunting and stuff? So you may have seen movies where there is an old temple and somebody goes in and moves a knob and then there are 20 gears that move and then a th another thing moves or a wall moves. These kind of things are called conformational changes. So when the antibody is attached to platelet factor four, there is a conformational change in the platelet factor four and big blobs of carbohydrates, specifically negatively charged carbohydrates, get attached to the platelet factor four. When they get attached to the platelet factor four, see here in the middle, they start aggregating the factor fours together. Factor four were sitting in the blood vessel, all floating around like fish. And now we have an antibody attached to them. That caused a big carbohydrate to become attached to them, sugar attached to them. Then those sugars attached to each other, that brought platelet factor fours together. That brought, brought the platelet to which these factor fours and antibody complexes are attached, all of them together. That also caused clotting. So two mechanism, platelet themselves becoming active because antibody complex sat on them. And the active platelet are going to aggregate with each other. So that is one mechanism of clotting. The second mechanism of clotting is that these platelet factor fours are now aggregating with each other because of big and ionic polysaccharides or carbohydrates, which in turn bring these platelets together as well because these silly platelet are stuck to them with antibodies. Where did these antibodies come from? These are the ones that are produced against the vaccine or heparin. So that clustering would be clotting. Now in the study, what did they do? In the study, they took samples of the patients who were having, who were suffering with clotting after vaccine. So they took five samples of patients who had received AstraZeneca and developed clotting. The age was 35 to 72 years. Mean age was 44 year. 40% 40 were women, 60% were men. So the concept of women under the 50 years of age, here, 40% were women, the rest were men. They had gotten the vaccine. They had developed the clotting. So what happened was, if we now look at the mechanism, they got the vaccine. Vaccine produced the spikes, or not just a spike. Maybe it was the adenovirus. Remember, this is happening mainly in adenovirus-based, but it is also happening in the messenger RNA. So it may be the spike or it may be the adenovirus or maybe both of them do it. The end result was B cells will produce antibodies. That is what we want them to do. These antibodies, if incorrectly bind to plat uh, platelet factor four, which will happen in some people who we do not know when the antibody will bind with the platelet factor four. What they found was researchers, it did not need 
heparin to be present to create a new epitope. This, ep this antibody produced because of a vaccine was independently able to connect with the platelet factor 4 without any other help. Fortunately, in very smaller number of people. Otherwise, if it was happening to a larger number of people, then everybody would be getting in trouble. Now, my conjecture is that it is because of adenovirus, because adenovirus-based vaccine are known to cause clotting for decades ago. It's not a new phenomena. I know that scientists lead us to believe it is somehow a new thing. It's not new. It is known. So from there, my hypothesis is more than the spike, it may be adenoviruses. This is why this issue is occurring more in adenovirus-based vaccines. But we have seen this as messenger RNA as well. So maybe, maybe spike protein is also doing this. So here, no heparin is needed. Antibodies would connect with the platelet factor 4, and all the remaining mechanism that we just dis discussed would become active without the need for heparin. And they saw that this occurrence was 14 to 40 days, mean was 28 days. This also goes against the message that was given by Fauci, who said from three days to 17 days and mean is nine, nine days. I heard an interview in which he was saying that. So again, I can give him a, to be fair to him, he didn't know. But hopefully he would correct his message now. It can be from 14 days to 40 days, mean 28 days. And we have seen it starting to occur in five days as well. Now, how did they find out exactly where the antibody was attaching? They not only found the antibodies are attaching and causing clotting, they actually found exactly where on the platelet factor four these were attaching. That is such a beautiful thing they did. So here is what they did. Fortunately, once again, platelet factor four is a small protein. It's not a very big protein. I think it is 70 amino acids long. So not a big protein. They created 70 versions of this protein. And in every version, in every mutation, they changed one amino acid at a time. So they had 70, 70 versions of this platelet factor 4. And every version had a single amino acid modified and was different from others. Then they took the antibodies present in the patients of the vaccine-induced clotting and they put those antibodies on these versions of the platelet factor 4 and they saw where the antibody attacks more versus less. Based on that, they could focus on the area of the platelet factor 4 where the antibodies were attacking. This is beautiful. I would love to go and shake their hands for the work they did. And this is genius. So what they found was the following. If you see here, this is the platelet factor 4. In this factor 4, this is an area where heparin connects. And the heparin-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia or thrombocytopenia antibodies connect. They found out that vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia antibodies were binding. So remember, the antibody binds to an epitope that is anywhere from 7, 8, Epi, uh, amino acids to 11. It was binding to eight amino acids, and four of them were common with heparin induced thrombosis amino acid. Four of them were independent. So part of it was common and part of it was in independent. So you might say, so what? Why is Mobin talking about this in such depth? One, it is so much fun to look at how much they know. Secondly, this tells us. If heparin is given to a patient of this clotting, then heparin is going to come here and bind with this area and displace the antibodies that are attached here. So heparin would not only help with the blood thinning, it would help to displace the incorrectly bound antibodies. 
So heparin, at least from this paper's point of view, becomes a better solution for clotting than other anti-clotting factors. Remember, even I had been saying, don't give heparin because that might cause hit as well. So now the hit is still possible, but heparin seems to be actually a better choice. And I'll show you all of this in the paper. So four amino acids, unique. Four amino acids with heparin or common with heparin, which allows heparin to come displace this, these antibodies. Also, we just talked about it, heparin. So let's say this is the vaccine-induced antibody connected here to this area. Then you give heparin. Heparin would come and bind here and displace this antibody and help reduce clotting. We just talked about it. Second mechanism. This is the beauty of this whole paper. They actually found the exact amino acids that were involved in making the epitope. They found this, if you look at me, my picture in the side, they found the exact pattern to which the antibodies were attacking. That, that is a beautiful thing. So this is not a hypothesis anymore. This is not a conjecture. This is not, a, we think this may be. They actually came back with the exact amino acids. So let's see those amino acids and I'll explain this diagram. Here is their table. So if I go to the bottom of this paper, They have a table A over here. I think I scrolled too much. So give me a second. Here. So look at this, this table. These are the eight amino acids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight amino acids and these are the positions the 22 means the position number 22 then position number 23 28 46 47 and the beginning r or h is the letter for the amino acid that was originally there and then they had changed it to a known amino acid and then did their experiments to find out these amino acids were involved in making the epitope how are they involved so look at it <laughs> this is this is beautiful. So amino acid at, at place 22. That amino acid is arginine. Then at 23 is histidine. At 28 is glutamate. 46 is lysine. 47 is arginine. Then all the other 50, 62, and 66, these are all lysine as well. So how many lysines? One, two, three, four. Four lysines, one arginine, actually two arginines, one glutamate and one histidine. These were the, and they know the exact placement of these amino acids, exact placement of these bricks. Now you can say that, hey, these bricks are pretty separately present. Why are they making an epitope? Remember that these ropes, these proteins are folded. When they are folded, various parts of them, which may be on a line far away from each other, but when they're folded, they are brought together to make combined areas. So when this protein is folded, the 3D shape may have all of those come together. That becomes the epitope. So um, how is that look like? They actually have a picture of it. Here. <laughs> this Look at this picture. This one, which we say is vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia, n equals 5. Here, these red ones are the amino acids that I just showed you. And this is a globular folded platelet factor four, and the antibody binds here. Look at the heparin on the B side. Heparin binds to a very similar area. There is just four amino acids. Now this is, let's say, from the other side, from the back side of this platelet factor four. And you can see some amino acid here are different from the heparin. So there is a, there is a, common part of the antibody attack by vaccine or by heparin induced antibodies and there is a dissimilar part as well so then if you read this paper in in here you would actually see we identified eight surface amino acids 
that were necessary for binding of vaccine induced thrombo thrombotic thrombocytopenia samples. And then they talk about those amino acids. Then they talk about the mechanism that I just discussed as well. There is also an interesting thing here. Our results explain why some VITT samples tested in studies by Schultz et al. and Greenacre, remember they were the original scientists who said this is vaccine, were inhibited by therapeutic doses of heparin. So this is the discussion. Um, I think it is a beautiful mechanism. There are some, not only the beauty of the mechanism itself is interesting, what is important is it is because of the antibodies. That means I have been saying for a long time that cardiac inflammation is going to be an antibody-based thing as well. I am sure that we will see that to be correct as well. The reason is that these mechanisms have been observed before. We haven't seen these things specific only to coronaviruses. So those folks who continue to, this is at the end, just my little disagreement with some other researchers or scientists, not researchers, or doctors who just keep saying, this is the spike protein causing clotting. This is the spike protein causing inflammation. It is not that. It still may be spike protein caused generation of antibodies. So of course, no vaccine, no clotting. So vaccine did something. It, the clotting is coming from there. So I'm not saying vaccine is not the cause here. What I'm saying is when we take an incorrect mechanism, then people just dismiss us because they know the mechanism is incorrect. The correct mechanism is immune system's response. Then fortunately, this can be tackled with heparin. Secondly, if we can provide support to the patient, patient will become okay within two, three months because after that, these antibodies are gone. No memory B cells are formed. So we are, patient is actually lucky. And similarly, I feel that for cardiac inflammation, it will be antibody dependent inflammation compared to spike protein going and attacking the heart. So that is a discussion. I'm gonna um, stop here. We'll do a little chit chat as well. My brother is visiting me from tomorrow for a few days. So we are doing some preparations and cooking and those. So I may have a smaller period of time for a chit chat, but um, I'm going to come back for the chit chat. There, is, there are some questions. Can you please hold on to your questions and uh, come back? So for example, Jody says, can we just take prednisone for this? My son and I have both gotten this mild version randomly in past, probably viral and prednisone work. Yes, you can. Because prednisone at the end of the day would suppress the immune system. The only thing is if you suppress the immune system too much, that can reduce the efficacy of the vaccine. But I would rather have a vaccine's efficacy reduced compared to people developing clotting and dying. And another thing is there could be aspirin or other anti-clottings as well. So Lizzie says, it's the immune system response to vaccine and to the virus in natural infection. Yes. So in the nat natural infection, this can happen as well. And in that case as well, it may be the clotting because of antibodies or it could be because of inflammation causing clotting. Their mechanism can be very different because the virus causes such a widespread infl inflammatory response that clotting is bound to occur. And I've discussed those mechanisms before. Okay, so let's stop and I'm gonna come back again for a few minutes, and, uh, in a few minutes and we'll do a chit chat. And sorry, I forgot to say, please like, subscribe and share. And there are some links in the description if you would like to support this work. After the YouTube's continuously demonetization and removal of the videos, I think it is becoming more and more important to support. But anyways, totally up to you. If you wanted to support, there are three links. One is with PayPal. Other one is buy me a coffee that doesn't need PayPal. And then there is a Patreon as well. Thank you. And I would see you in a few minutes.